yesterday had a very solid draw against Abdu Satarov. What has happened here? Shall we bring up the analysis board and check out this game? Yes. So, <clears throat> the game went as we spoke before. It's B6 and A3. So, if I'm not mistaken, this is like the Queen's Indian Petrosian line. Yep. yep. That's what it's called, yeah. <laughs> so, Bishop A6, Queen C2, and Bishop goes back to B7, Knight C3, C5, E4, CD4, Knight D4, and Bishop C5. And after Knight B3, Knight C6. Yeah, this is one of those lines um, that both white and black have to be careful because there are so many similar move orders. Um, I think I played a crazy game like this when I played against the uh, American Master Ben Feingold and I was playing with black pieces and it was just such an easy game. So, but it happened like many years ago. And after night C6, Hikaru is thinking... Yeah. It's, it's very similar to the game that Magnus lost. Ah, yep. against Solomonov, yeah. Knight F3 instead of Knight B3, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, there was very important that Magnus retreated the bishop not to E7 but to D6. But here, the bishop hasn't even retreated at all. So it's a big question to take the bishop, but I, I will check out. I just need to input the moves. I will. Uh, F3 Check out the database, yeah. F3 was played relatively quickly by Hikaru, which is an interesting move to kind of avoiding any. No, no, not like knight g4 was, a, was an idea. No, I'm, I'm just uh, kind of thinking, yeah, like taking on c5 is one thing, then b takes, and you have to care of d4 square. So perhaps, even though you wouldn't mind taking in the long run, mm -hmm. first prepare. But I'm not sure if it's any good. Well, what white tends to do in this type of positions is actually just take the bishop. Yes. And uh, then just go bishop e3. Bishop e3, bishop e3 right. And... And the whole idea, this is it, this is the deep point of f3. Knight if you D4. jump into d4 with the knight, the queen goes to f2. Yeah. You got a square. Mm. Yeah, that that's, makes sense, yeah. Okay. And after f3, Pranav is still thinking, because... Yeah. Black has a few options, yeah. right? And and black has to be careful as well with um, white's idea. This is this is one of the trendy ideas, you know, in modern chess. Like these people, <laughs> elite grandmasters, they're just going to go to the sideline of sidelines. You mentioned uh -huh. it before, and uh, try to confuse their opponents and trying to test their knowledge whether they know it or not. And even if they do, how far do you know this variation? Exactly. You can. Uh, it's interesting as well because we were discussing in the bus with Anish Giri, right? And mm. this was his whole strategy in this tournament, just to kind of confuse people with some it's very strange move orders, but then get a position that he's strategically familiar with. And you're going to see the same here with Hikaru. You know, he, he's giving his opponent Ooh. a choice to you.
confront us? Um, I think it's practical place. Ah, just rupees. Uh, rupees might be seven. Rupees seven, and he's gonna go here, and this will be this will be the game. And nicely done, Hikaru. Rupees seven. Yeah. Winning material. What amazes me about Hikaru that he really combines it with a lot of streaming. And it at some point, like a few years back, it felt like, okay, Hikaru is the streamer who occasionally plays the tournament, this and that, and then all of a sudden he starts playing those tournaments, he's still one of the best in the world. And that was very impressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I find that very impressive because, you know, he, he, he's, he plays a chess game, he recaps afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> On his free day, he streams all day. But... He seems to just win everything. You know, he won Norway chess. Here he's playing well. He just seems to be getting better and better. And, well, Pranav taking the rook. But after rook a7, there we see handshake. Hikaru Nakamura wins, which means that he moves on to six points. And now everything is going to hinge on our two... Our Four players on five and a half points out of seven. Will Eregaisi be able to win? And the other question is, what is happening between Karthikian and Narayanan? So can we take a look at the Karthikian against uh, Narayanan yeah, first? Yeah, is completely winning. I want to say, like, way too many pawns. That's a lot of pawns. <laughs> way too many pawns, and on board five, still has to be, honestly, still has to be a draw, but yeah, is, some difficulties, right? Who is better, actually? Yeah. Like, I mean, who is I pushing mean, for the win, rather? If we were to kind of rewind here, I think a move like Rook F8 means that